Hello and welcome to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I'm Joel. Y'all know Teddy, the main attraction here. We took him for a hike today and we went to, so we live close to the Idaho border. We kind of went up there and it's higher elevation. So there was a lot of snow. A lot of snow. So we weren't sure he was going to like it. <laughs> what did he do? He ran. He ran. So he kind of goes off on this little path that ends up on a cross-country ski path. Yeah. So he saw it before we did. He did. And, and he was oh, like, we're going this way. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's just this nice little hilly path mm -hmm. and it's for uh, cross-country skiers. And he ran he so much. loved it. Yeah. He loved it. He did. And then we went, ran into town for, to do some, like, grocery shopping. So he should be exhausted. exhausted. He might fall asleep. You might get Teddy snores. But even right now, he's looking right out the window to see if there are squirrels. Nope. Not right now, but he's still looking. So who knows? Uh, should also note, we are filming this on Transgender Day of Visibility. So I'm wearing Protect Trans Kids. You can't see it because Teddy. And what are you wearing? Be fiercely authentic. Yes. Um, I got this while we were at the um, Gender Odyssey. Gender Odyssey yeah. conference on transgender folks. Ago. Yeah. And I just love this shirt. It doesn't really say anything, but it says everything. It's, yeah, because when you say be, be fearlessly authentic and you have the transgender flag colors, it says everything. Yeah. So yeah. So just and I, I, by the time you see this. It will not be Transgender Day of Visibility yeah. anymore, but we are here representing as much as we can. It's also so. Sunday. Happy Easter for those who celebrate. Oh, right. Easter. <laughs> so happy Easter. We're having happy, spaghetti. <laughs> we are going to have spaghetti and meatballs, but uh, it is also the last day of March. Yep. And we're going to have homemade shamrock shakes for dessert. Yes. So that's Yay. exciting. Yeah. So so let's wrap up the month of March. Is the, That's the long way of saying let's wrap up March. Wrap it up. I had... Uh, kind of i had a lot of high points and then i had some frustrations toward the end in my reading month how did yours go i'm a little impressed with my reading month yeah, yeah. you had a good one i had a good one you I, had a very good one i um had some really good books and um i think both of us were geared towards irish authors mm -hmm. so um and I, why because we're going to ireland we're yeah. going to be insufferable about it I just know. get ready and 40 some days yeah. i forgot but it's coming just, up yeah. It's coming. It's coming too quickly. We yeah. have a lot to do before we. Lots go. to do, and but I think it's going to be fun. And uh, I'm sorry, we'll be missing Teddy. You would have so much fun, yeah. but it is what it is. But yeah, so we're getting we're getting ready for that. So we both read a lot of Irish authors, but it's kind of mixed. I have one non-Irish author. Do you have? I have a couple. One, a couple. Okay. A couple, yeah. So let's kind of get into it. You finished what six, seven books? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six books. And I finished five. So do you want to go first? Sure. Because I, I did two of mine together. You'll know those. Oh, yeah. So, um, But the first book I read is one I've always wanted to read, and I was very excited about it, is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Hello, Irish. <laughs> yes. Uh, we are going to go see Oscar Wilde's house, Yeah. but it will not be open on the day we're there. So. Yeah. So we're going to stand outside and say hi. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a picture. We'll send it off. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Picture of Dorian Gray is a really twisted little book. Um, so Dorian Gray gets his portrait painted and he sells his soul to let the picture grow old and not him. Mm -hmm. But as he starts to become this horrible, vile person, the portrait shows that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a really twisted little book. It's beautifully written. I mean, I think, I mean, we're talking about Oscar Wilde, who is mm -hmm. a tortured soul anyway, and um, it came out in the book, but um, I just found it really beautifully written yeah. and loved it. We have watched a filmed version of what was essentially a stage version of yeah. The Picture of Dorian Gray, but I have never actually read the book, so I feel a little shamed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good but book. I've read plays yeah. of Oscar Wilde. I've just never read... That one. Um, your last Subaru was gray, and we called it Dorian. Yeah. Oh, uh, your Toyota. The Toyota, yeah. yeah. It was My Toyota was Dorian. Yeah. And, and I, had a, I had a beige Subaru that we named Bailey. Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> so. so, good book. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I read an Oscar Wilde book. I probably will do another Oscar Wilde book someday. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it. He's good. He's a lot of fun. He is. Yeah. 
All right, my first book is something we don't own, but we've thought about purchasing because we both loved it. You read it in February. Yeah, I did. It's Mrs. Quinn's Rise to Fame by Olivia Ford. How fun is that book? It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, and it had a serious point, it, too. It does. It has a very serious side. And I'm so glad you encouraged me to read it. So I was planning on all Irish authors, and you finished this book toward the end of February, and you were like, you have to read it. And I had wanted to read it anyway, so I allowed myself to say, all right, well, I'm going to kick off April with a non-Irish author. It's fine. Actually, I don't know where she's from. I, I she's I assume she's in the UK, but I, I don't know. For all I know, she is Irish. <laughs> oh, no. Probably not. But hey, um, such a good book. So obviously it's about Mrs. Quinn. She is 77. Yeah. And she loves to bake. She's obsessed with this show called Britain Bakes, which is a fictional version of Great British Bake Off. And she decides to apply and when she does, it, she like she gets on the show, obviously, but the show itself doesn't really start until like halfway through the book, mm -hmm. because a lot of it is about her deciding to audition and what that means for her, because as she writes in the application, this is not a spoiler, it happens really early in the book, they, it asks something about what is your most significant achievement, and she feels like she hasn't achieved anything, because her whole life has been defined by being a wife, and her family they don't have kids but based around her family and she's never done anything for herself so she feels kind of unimportant and she wants to try to do something for herself and it's just such a sweet book and it does have that sort of structure where you have your present day storyline and then it kind of flashes back and i like uh you had said it was something almost slumdog millionaire ish yeah. about it because there will be a baking challenge and then you sort of flash back and you see what this recipe or how this recipe sort of came into her life at some earlier point and what it meant to her. It's a really beautiful book. I I, I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. Um, very touching, very sweet. And her wanting to be her own person mm. and to come and be and leave something behind. And yeah. it is absolutely a beautiful book it is and the serious part i no spoiler but there's like vague reference to it because it said it teases this on the description of the book on the jacket um she has a secret that she has been keeping from her husband and as open and honest with each other as they are she has never told him something that happened in her youth and that's the thing that the flashbacks tell and it's it really is just a beautiful book. Yeah. I had kind of assumed it would be mostly cinnamon bun, and it is cinnamon bun. Yeah, it, it is. It makes you feel good, but it also it doesn't feel like empty calories because it is a little <laughs> bit seriously yeah. serious. So I liked it. Yeah. Thank you for making me read it now. Yeah, I really I, I encourage it. all of you to uh, yeah. check it out mm -hmm. because it's a it's a fun book if you like baking, but you want a a story. So. Yeah. So I'm I'm a big fan. What did you do next? My next one, I don't have the book, um, is Forsaken Country by Alan Eskins. Alan Eskins did a um, series of Detective Max Rupert, and this is number four in the series. I've read the first three, and I really liked them. And I was very excited when I saw number four come up, and it was just okay. It, like I told Greg earlier, it's like, I don't know what it was about. It was just okay. But yeah. it was about a... Um, Max Rupert um, had a very challenging event happen in book number three. He kind of became a hermit and hiding away and wanted to kind of give up on everything. And a friend of his came and says, my daughter and grandson have been, are missing and I need help. Mm -hmm. And he goes off and looks for him. I mean, it, it was good. It was, it was It's on a slower pace book. Mm -hmm. But um, in the mystery series of all four, I really... It wasn't my favorite, but it was still good in the series. So, mm -hmm. um, it was a fun series. Yeah. Yeah. I missed a lot of what you said in the beginning because Teddy was being adorable. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> but I remember you had said that you were just kind of okay yeah. on that. So. What'd you have? My next was Twisted, The Tangled History of Black Hair Culture by Emma DeBerry. I wanted to make sure I got a book like Twisted in because I, when I decided I wanted to read Irish books before we go to Ireland, I didn't want to read a lot of the, you know, traditionally white male authors that people read. 
So I wanted a lot of stories about like women and female experiences of Ireland. And I wanted to try to find an author of color and Emma DePiri is both. She's writing about her experience as a woman, but she's also specifically writing about her experience growing up as a mixed race woman in Ireland. And the book is much more academic than I had expected. But what's nice about that is that she's not just saying like, kind of like, this was my experience and I feel that people were doing this to me. She's kind of bringing the receipts and saying, this is a global thing. It has happened all over. And here are examples and like proof of people being treated badly by their hair. Like there's an example early on in the book about a school in South Africa where a girl came with hair that hadn't been straightened. And they, it, the school was like, you, you can't show up like this. The dress code says you can't be dirty. And how offensive <laughs> is that? So it, it's a very interesting book. I would say it is a very essential book. I had picked it up wanting a lot more about the story of her growing up in Ireland, but that's something I specifically wanted out of the book, and it's not fair for me to have expected it to do something different than it does. So I'm glad I read it, and it was very interesting. Yeah. What do you have next? I think we did this one together. Oh, is that what you have next? Yeah. Okay, and I have the book over here. Yep. I'm going to let you hold it because I got Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Ashes Angela's by Ashes. Frank McCourt. It was such an amazing book. Yes. Um, it's a, kind of a um, memoir of his childhood, which is incredibly, incredibly sad. But he brings a lot of humor to the story. He does. And beautifully written. Um, I think we both did the audio. Yes. And um, with his accent. And he would talk about little songs his father would sing. So he sings the song. It's so good. And it is, just really yeah. brings a lot to that book. And one thing I've, if I may jump in. Yeah, no, dude. I have talked to people in the comments about that. They kind of said that they didn't remember it being a funny book. And I wonder, because we both did the audio, I think when you hear Frank McCourt read it, the humor really comes out. Mm -hmm. So even on a page that is sort of almost devastatingly sad and you feel like you want to cry, he can make you laugh. And I don't know if I would have experienced the humor at that same level in print. I'm sure it's great, but hearing him really brings out that sense of humor that the book has. Um, I really enjoyed it. I do want to read his second one, Tiz. Mm -hmm. and, Me too. Yeah, probably after we go to probably Ireland. Probably after but. Ireland. Um, but I don't know, maybe before, because it's it's out there, and I'm, I'm looking for some things to read. Yeah. Um, and I definitely want to read Teacher Man as well. Teacher Man would be Which good is the too. third memoir he yeah. wrote. A lot of people pointed out that his brother, Malachi, has also written a memoir. I, I, I don't know. I think I would stick with Frank McCourt. Yeah. Terrible, terrible story, but... I started Angela's Ashes before you did. And I think mm -hmm. my first hour or two listening to it, I knew I was really loving it. And you decided to pick it up. Yeah. But so because I started it maybe two days before you did, I looked because I wanted to see a photo of Frank McCourt's father, who was also named Malachi McCourt. So I Googled and saw a lot of information about his brother Malachi instead because he was kind of a he had written his own memoir he was kind of like an actor kind of like a bartender so there was a lot about him online but he was still alive two days later you started the book and immediately did the same thing I had done and came came into the kitchen and you were like did you know his brother just died and I was like no he didn't like this week <laughs> yeah and then you said like this week and I was like really so in the two days between when I had started the book and Googled it and that when you started the book yeah. and read it, Malachi McCourt died, which is awful timing. Yeah. But yeah, just a great book, Angela's Ashes. Um, really great. I, I All time it, favorite. Re yeah, it's really high up on my list. Yeah. Um, but I also think it was a good book to read before we go to Ireland to understand, I mean, how poor Ireland had been. Yeah. And um, and I don't want to go there and take anything for granted. I for sure. don't want to take for granted of the struggles that these people have gone through. Yeah. Although we're going to be in Dublin and we're not going to see that. Mm -hmm. I hope when we're in the outskirts, we understand it. Yeah. So. And it is also interesting because you get the perspective of the different religions and the, the sort of clashes. And like Frank McCourt's grandmother 
one thing she always says about his father is he's a no good northern man like people constantly talk about his bad behavior because he's from the north but then his grandmother will also say with the look of a presbyterian <laughs> <laughs> and, one, and of the, one of the lines is like your father has presbyterian hair yeah like, I mean, it's, like, it's like little funny things like that that brings into the book that I mean, yeah, his grandmother probably said it and probably horribly, yeah. but he brings it to the book and it makes it a little funny. And really gives gives you an understanding of some, some of the conflicts and things that were going on um, and prejudices and things like that. It's even to the point where a lot of the people in his town hate the English, hate any mention of them, and mm -hmm. you do understand why, because, you know, a lot of the... the the circumstances that uh, English people brought about in Ireland caused my father's family to hop not just from Scotland, but to Ireland and then to the United States. So it's the reason my father's family is in the United States. So anyway, but it just really, it was a good primer on yeah. some Irish. And I, some people have also commented to point out, uh, I, I know there was one person specifically who said uh, people of Limerick actually don't like Frank McCourt. I had seen things that said that uh, there were people from Limerick who said that the book was really exaggerated, that it makes it look like it was much worse than it actually was. And I feel like any town, city, place is complicated, has different parts. So yes, there might be a part where your experience of the world could be pretty bleak. There might be a side of town where it's less bleak. And it does feel like the people of Limerick have come around on Frank McCourt and his story. Like, there's a Frank McCourt Museum yeah. in Limerick now. So, I mean, perhaps there were elements that were exaggerated. I can't say for sure where the truth lies, but it... But maybe seems... that's how Frank saw it. Yeah, I mean, he was a child. Yeah, he, he was, was a very child. young. This is how I felt. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of that stuff would have yeah. been his world. So, especially his mother was afraid, ashamed to go out of the house because she felt like she didn't have nice clothes. So his yeah. whole experience would be poverty yeah so um excellent excellent book excellent book and yes. was this your next so movie? it was not actually my next okay. one i did finish one book before oh. i finished angela's ashes and that was the country girls by edna o'brien i had a copy of it from the library that had the trilogy of books that go into the country girls trilogy i only read the first one which is the country girls because i wanted to take some you were getting a little bit toward the end of the month by the time I finished it and I wanted to try to get some other Irish authors in so I figured I can circle back because I would be interested enough to come back uh it's beautifully written and again it really captures that perspective of what it was to grow up as a woman in Ireland when in a deeply religious society and the hypocrisies and you know it's not just specifically an Irish story because you know the at the beginning of the book the two female protagonists are I think 14 and there are grown men who want to kiss them and keep saying like oh I'd like to marry you and it's like she's 14 dude calm down <laughs> and Having grown up with sisters, I know grown men treated my sisters really creepy when they were 14, too. And it was a very controversial book in Ireland when it was published, in part because it talks about like, like women having sexual desires or encounters, but also because uh, for a lot of other things. So I'm really glad that I read it. It did feel like it ended kind of abruptly, but there are <laughs> two other stories and then an epilogue after that. So I would definitely go back and do more. So that was actually, the, I finished that just before I finished Angela's Ashes. What do you have next? I had one that we were very excited about. Yeah. Travels with Charlie in Search of America yep. by John Steinbeck. So yes. it's kind of a memoir of John Steinbeck going cross country with his big poodle dog, mm -hmm. Charlie. Show the picture of Charlie. Ugh. I think there's an actual picture of Charlie somewhere. Uh, oh, right on the, there. On the cover? Yeah. So... Charlie was a big old brown poodle dog, and um, he just was, I mean, a really great dog that just was by his side and was no trouble, just like, let's go travel and have fun. But um, John Steinbeck goes all the way from, I think, Maine down across the northern states. Mm -hmm. He hits Montana. 
he fell in love with Montana. It's, yep. it's like just like me. <laughs> it says it's probably his favorite state he's ever been to, and will always have a moment with Montana. But he ended up in California. A Montana moment. A Montana moment. I love that. I do too. <laughs> a little slow pace, but it is a really good book. Um, he's the people he stops and talks to, and um, the things he does while on the trip, and then he comes back across the southern states. And then back up to um, uh, New York, where he was from at the time. Mm. And the very last chapter of the book is really kind of sweet. Um, because he's been on the road a lot. He and Charlie have been on the road, and he's tired and seen a lot. And he was just, he was really tired. But the, the last chapter is really kind of cute. So mm. yeah. uh, it's a really great book. I enjoyed it. I um, have read a couple of John Steinbeck books. So yeah. I wanted to do this. And, and it's just, it's beautiful. It book. is. A, Look, I mean, it's just this great drawing. Yeah. You have John, I, Charlie. I love the end papers, too. Yeah. You got to show the end papers. We kind of did when we showed the author photo, but. But you got the little map of the United States and where he went. Yeah. Um, he has a little place in Montana with the bears. Is that a cake? A cake? Right here? Or is it the pancakes it's with a candle pancakes. in it? It looks like pancakes candles. with a candle in it. I have had that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, um, really fun book. Yeah. I, so you yeah. did the audio. I did. Right, yes. It's read by Gary Sinise. Yes. And, um, it, <laughs> Gary Sinise he, is complicated. He, he is. I like Gary Sinise as an actor, mm. but he's complicated personally. But Gary Sinise, uh, played one of the guys in Of Mice okay. and Men. Um, and... We had found this edition of the book like one year ago. Oh, God. Yeah. When we were in Pullman, uh, because Jamie, our previous dog, was uh, being treated for a nasal tumor. So there was a great used bookstore in Pullman. And that is where we found that book. And actually, that kind of, I, I, I will, will admit this, I think part of the sort of difficulty I had in the latter part of April with reading had to do with a bit some reminders of the fact that one year ago we were in Pullman and then by August we ended up losing Jamie. And so I think without me realizing what was happening, I sort of like had a therapeutic moment with myself <laughs> last night. Just kind of realized um, a lot of the difficulty I was having reading had to do with that. So anyway, so my next book was actually... Angela's Ashes. Do you want? I have two other books to talk about. Do you want me to do one of them, or do you want me to? Um, do you want to just go? Yeah. No, nope, you go ahead and do one. Then right. I'll do these two in the middle. Okay. So the next uh, next book was Angela's Ashes, but after that, I finally right. did. Uh, I took a long time with this one, which is William Trevor's story collection entitled Last Stories. William Trevor is Irish, of course, and has been regarded as a master of the short story form. And I have always, for years, wanted to read one of his books and finally got around to doing it. This was sort of the kick in the pants I needed to get around to reading one of his books. And it did pay off in the regard that I think he's a tremendous writer. There would be moments when I was reading this when there would be a passage that was so beautiful and interestingly worded mm -hmm. that you just kind of feel like you were taken aback for a moment and then I, you'd almost have to stop and think how did he do that and that is really good um i will say maybe it's that i was feeling kind of melancholy and this story collection is kind of melancholy i mean it's called last stories and he did die after this was published so maybe in hindsight i'm having like a therapeutic moment with myself again i feel like i might have resisted it a little more because it is a book that kind of heavily deals with People who are feeling like outsiders, feeling lonely, feeling sad. And I don't think it was the right book for me to read while I was in the headspace that I am. But I do think that William Trevor is an incredible author. And I would definitely read more of his work. So I'm glad that I finally got around to it. So yeah, that was Last Stories. I'm going to throw my last two books together because they are they're little guys, but they were packed with a lot. Claire Keegan's Small Things Like These and Foster. I am so happy that you finally read these. <laughs> I have been, like, quietly waiting. <laughs> um, I wanted to read uh, Claire Keegan before we went to mm -hmm. Ireland and just to read them because they've been on the bookshelf behind me for a lot, and I see no. them a lot, and I always ask what, they, what they're like. Yeah, um, and 
Real quick, uh, the film adaptation of Foster, which is called The Quiet Girl, is on Hulu in the United States. And we have talked about watching it, but, you, it but you said you wanted to read the book yeah. first. So now we can watch the movie. Yeah. So, um, Both are beautiful. So I read one and I listened to this one on audio, which is good because I got to see the word in this one and it was beautifully written. But I got to hear an accent and a story in this one. And um, they're both really good. Uh, I think you like small things like these more. More. Yes. And um, I was listening to a um, Ann Patchett talking, and she says she likes Foster yes. more. And I um, think I, I think I like small things like these more. I think it, it resonated with me a lot more. Yeah. I love the story of Foster. I do. To me, I... And I know a lot of people like prefer Foster, so I don't want to take anything away from yeah. that. But I feel like I wanted a little more from Foster as much as I loved it. Like, I almost want this to be 100 pages longer so I can sort of <laughs> sit with it a little more. Uh, and I feel like small things like these is perfect as it is. So, Yeah, they both kind of start, get powerful, and then they both kind of stop to make you think. Mm -hmm. Like this one, he says, this may be the biggest mistake of my life when I walk through the door. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a spoiler. Nobody will know what you're talking about okay. if they don't. <laughs> if they don't. <laughs> and it makes you think, is it or is it? But he's doing the right thing. Mm. And I God, I love this book. Yeah, it's so good. So, it's so good. Yeah, I we had such a long conversation too about small things like these. Uh, well, did you finish it last night or two nights ago? Two nights ago. And how it had been a finalist for the Booker, and there were a lot of people who kind of sneered and said that book is too short. It shouldn't even be in consideration. Mm -hmm. It's like no, it's perfect. It is perfect. There's a is. lot in these little pages. Yeah, I love it. I'm yeah. so glad. So I think I really Teddy enjoyed might it. Um, I, I will say both these books. Um, really came to me at the right time after reading a past book that I had done a couple of months ago. And I don't want to get into it because it's a little spoiler, but it tied it all together and mm. I thought it was beautiful. Yes. And I would, God, I would love to talk about that, but I we know. can't. We can't. We can't. But yes, so. Uh, but I was so excited that you read Claire. I and I'm so glad I did. Yeah, she is a tremendous wow. writer. Just um, really good. Do we have any more? Uh, we have the one that was published in the U.S. last year, which has one late story. Yes, so late in the day. Thank you. I couldn't think of the name. So it has one story that had not been published in a book. I think it was in The New Yorker. Okay. And uh, two stories that had been part of previous collections. I like it. I don't I don't like it as much as Foster and small things like these, but I do like it. I, I think I'm going to do it just yeah. because I'm going to dead enjoy about those. So yeah. I, think I, I love the covers of the U.S. I, editions, they're so too. They're so beautiful, too. Yeah, very visually striking, and I love the different colors that yeah. you see. So now we need purple. <laughs> purple, yellow. Purple, yellow, so, orange, uh, all those. I'm very excited about all that. Yeah. Uh, and then the only other book I have to talk about for the month of March was a DNF, which was Milkman by Anna Burns, which I think really, again, toward the end of the month, I just was not in a good headspace for reading. Work was a little stressing me out a little bit and then just other things. And then I, I really do think a lot of it had to do with not really realizing that we were sort of one year out from an event with Jamie and that was weighing on me harder than I thought it was. Um, so the first chapter of Milkman really seemed fantastic. I was convinced I was going to love it. And then the second chapter, I just lost all momentum and felt like I was really struggling to get through it. And I uh, just didn't feel all that. I, I just, it's not that I didn't feel interested because the first chapter really caught my attention and sounded great. But I was really just struggling. And I tried to listen to it for like a week and wasn't getting anywhere. And finally, one night we were sitting down to dinner and it was just like, you know, I just, I really just don't feel like I'm in the mood for this book right now. But people were so excited when I said that I was reading it in a Friday Reads. And you actually said to me, it's like, well, if you're not having fun with it, what are you doing? And it's literally the name of my channel, supposedly fun. Like, this is supposed to be fun. So... Thank you. You're welcome. I felt like I had, because I feel like 
forcing myself to get through it was not going to make me like the book. It would probably only harm my experience of the book. So it's a DNF for now. I would like to revisit it at some point in the future, but I don't think it will happen before we go to Ireland. Yeah. So this that works. Was, yeah. Thank you. Well, Good it was luck. your idea. So. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah. So that was my last thing for uh, March. Now, I have like a list of some books that I might try to get to in the month of April. Do you have anything that you might want to do? I don't. Um, I have a reader suggestion of I'm going to try, but I kind of want to get into it and see if I'm going to like it. Okay. Uh, cause I, um, oh, I it, know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a lot. So hmm. I want to see if I get in and I like it. So I'm going to start that tomorrow. Yeah. And, um, but thank you for the suggestions. A lot of people throw at me yeah. and, um, trying to get to most of them and I, I agree with most of them so i'm excited about it but i really want we i know you've suggested this to storygraph i need to try to echo it with them because we would love for there to be a feature where you can add something to your to read list or say that you're reading it and make a little note about who recommended it to you yeah. because it's so difficult to keep track so i found i put it into my currently reading and the only way you can add notes is if it's in currently reading is in your journal. Mm. So I put it in my journal, the notes, so I can remember. Oh. But it has to be currently reading. You can't put journal notes if it's to be read. Oh, that's so, frustrating. But that is something we can all reach out to a story graph yeah, and, and suggest, suggest uh, when somebody suggests a book to you. Because yeah. I go through my my list. It's huge. It's like, why is this in my wrist? Who suggested this? And so many times, I because of the way I am as a sort of mood reader, I, somebody will recommend a book to me and I will be interested in it. And I'll like add it to a to-read list or save it on Scribd if there's an audio available. And then like a year later, I will actually read it and think to myself, who recommended this to me? Yeah. I don't know anymore. I, I started <laughs> putting it on my spreadsheet of my um, reads, mm. but they got a lot to be a lot too. So um, yeah. Yeah, it's just too easy to put it in story graph. They just need yeah. to make a spot to so, suggest it. Yeah, it would be nice. Uh, by the way, Teddy insisted on getting down, and he passed out on the floor <laughs> behind us. So I, he is exhausted. Yeah, he is so exhausted. exhausted. But uh, yeah, didn't want to fall asleep with yeah. us. So I have like a vague plan for the month of April. I think the problem is it's going to be... It's, it's kind of multifaceted. There are a couple of different elements. With March, the benefit was... Irish books. It's like one thing that I was trying to do. I didn't get as much done as I wanted to for, you know, many reasons. But April, I'm throwing a lot at myself. I kind of decided I need to start the month off with something a little bit calm, funny, light, cinnamon bun. So actually this morning, I started something that will do that. In print, this is All the Right Notes by Dominic Lim. This had been gifted to us last year by Erica from the Broken Spine in collaboration with Montana Book Company after we lost Jamie. Yeah. So even there's even like a sad connection to this book. However, it's a queer rom-com about music and family. Like what is there somewhere on this it has a really great quote um and I don't know where it is, but it, oh a love letter to family, queer love and music handled with passion and skill. So I started it this morning and I was really I did Within, like, two pages, there was a line that I was like, that is really bad writing. <laughs> and you told me... Keep going. Keep going. See what it does. And I am now on page 25, and I'm really into it. But later that day, you go, oh, I think I'm going to like this book, because yeah. they got talking about their family. Like, five to ten pages <laughs> later, I was like, I think I'm really going to like this. So, this is what I'm doing to sort of help me get back into a good headspace and correct myself. Um, I was also thinking, we had a long conversation about audiobooks that might work. And I had kind of been thinking about Greta and Valden by Rebecca K. Riley, And then somebody, and again, I should have noted this down. Somebody commented and said, well, what about Greta and Valden? I know you were interested in that. And th that comment kind of made me think, yes, I should do that. So that's probably going to be my first audiobook. And I've seen that comment a couple of times because yeah. I keep asking you what it's about because I it's like it sounds kind of mm -hmm. good and we saw it and it's supposed to be funny kind of book company, so. yeah so that'll probably that's probably how I will start the month with all the right notes and Greta and Balden and then just loosely I have the idea that I so I had wanted to get a signed copy of James by Percival Everett and 
nice man over here ordered me one from Parnassus because he did an, ev an event at Parnassus. So it came, spoiler for my March book haul. Because if you get into that, uh, I'll probably read it too. But mm. we just did um, American Fiction. Oh, we did just watch American Fiction. Great movie, by the way. Yeah, yeah awesome great movie. movie. Fun. And, yeah, and based on Percival Everett's novel, Erasure. So I would like to read that, but I ne would like to read Huckleberry Finn first. So okay. once I'm done with all the right notes and Greta and Valden, I might try to power through an audio of Huckleberry Finn and then do James. Because it's a new release, I really want to read it, and I feel like I would want to read Huckleberry Finn first. You did and Tom Sawyer. I did Tom Sawyer. I'm not, was, not a big fan. Wasn't a huge fan. I've been hearing a lot of people commenting and saying that they read either Huckleberry Finn or Tom Sawyer or both before reading James and really weren't loving it. Okay. So Because let me do the same thing. Find yeah. a good audio and then maybe we'll do James with you. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be very fun. Read. Yeah. Um, and then I want to catch up on some Pulitzer books before the announcement is made on May 6th. I just did release my prediction. I'll link it down below. Um, and the ones I would most specifically want to get in would be Blackouts by Justin Torres and Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame Ajay Brenya. But I also really want to read some Scottish books because mm -hmm. we're going to Scotland too. So I have too many irons in the fire, <laughs> basically. Your but the plate one is full. My plate is full. It's an inside joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the ones I would probably prioritize, I would love to find a copy of The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. They don't have it at our Ooh, local used bookstore. I might look for an audio or see if the library has a copy, because I, I love Maggie Smith in that movie, and I've never read the book. So I might look for that, but I would also do Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan. I want to do that one, too. Yeah, so we might buddy read that one. Yeah. And I just got, somebody had recommended, again, I should be, keep better track of this. <laughs> Someone had recommended Sunset Song by Lewis Grassic Gibbon. And I have it from the library. It's actually on the floor, like five feet away, because we needed to clear space <laughs> for this. So I have it, but I don't have it. So that's my vague plan. It's okay. overly ambitious for April, especially if this kind of emotional slump continues but uh so did you think of anything else that you might want to do or no but i do have an update um i am still reading uh inland island by josephine johnson oh i read march in march yeah <laughs> so i'll read april in april and i love that you because somebody had commented yeah, and said that they did that they did and that. i love that you're doing it so it's kind of fun so on the first of the month i try to do the chapter so tomorrow tomorrow as we film this yeah. um i would not have the patience to do that i would want to keep going i just would it's, not be it's able to really beautiful written it is book. a beautiful book the, last, yeah. the march is really good i mean they're talking yeah. about the the birds coming out and yeah, yeah. Really i think cool. that was one of my favorite parts because i think march and april as you're leaving winter and heading into spring there are so many changes and new things going around and it's it yeah it's beautiful but it's kind of fun because i'm reading it as it happens that's true. Look at me. That is true. Yeah, you do have that going for you. So that is what we did yeah. in March. A little sneak peek at what we intend to do in April. Protect trans kids. Be fearlessly authentic. Be, be yourself. That's right. And I, we will check back. Yes. I mean, I'll be back, certainly. We'll be getting you back on, yeah. of course. We'll be getting Teddy back on, of course. Always. And we'll be, April will also be interesting because we're. I'm going to have to start filming ahead for the month of May. Yeah. I'm, I'm, maybe May. I'll throw a book, uh, a video in for you. I was and, just about to ask right. if you would. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a, something baking. You'll I've had baking. a lot of people ask me for some baking stuff. So, yeah. what do you want to bake? What are we going to bake? Mm, let you us tell know. Me, you tell me. Where should they let us know? Uh, in the comments below. It's fun to do. <laughs> so uh, let us know what you've been reading in the month of March, what you might be reading in April and all of that stuff. And as always, we really appreciate your time. We will be back. Until next time, happy reading.